hello, one and all, and welcome back to the reserve list. Say hello, reserve list. Hello, reserve list. list. Hello, reserve list. Lovely, jubbly. <clears throat> um, last time we left off, uh, the uh, the group had gotten stronger from their uh, from their previous warehouse uh, battle. Lydiana, uh, who had cast darkness in the previous fight, had vanished into the <laughs> portal that had been created into the nightmare realm. Uh, nowhere to be found. Uh, these guys uh, sort of sounded the alarm. The, the the ghosts had been much more widespread than they previously believed, and there was a lot of uh, chaos and panic going on. Uh, but they were escorted back to the keep. Got a long rest. Obviously, uh, the general is still out of town dealing with something uh, is somewhere else in the country. Uh, but Master Ulani uh, has taken over and is leading uh, some elite... Uh, guards and uh, Kensei monks uh, of her own. Uh, and these guys joined her on a raid after having taken a long rest of the Guresh estate in Menaceo. Uh They went in, used a combination of uh, Bodger's keen senses and some ranger tracking abilities to, uh, to find a secret passage going down uh, into a, a secret lower level of, uh, of the estate. Uh, they witnessed uh, up top the uh, Haregar Goresh uh, being arrested. That was being taken care of. Uh, they went down and uh, had some fun triggering and disabling some traps, uh, leading to three separate altars. One to uh, Merkul, the god of death. One to Leviathar, the goddess of pain. And the last to Bane, the god of tyranny himself. These are the trio of gods who reign from pandemonium and who are worshipped by the Aruhani. Um, you guys also uh, freed uh, and encountered a uh, a dark elf uh, by the name of Salen Larfendil, or rather called Salen Larfendil, uh, which is a, a slave name for elves in Aruhan. Um, she uh, was too weak to be taken with the retreating Gureshes and uh, uh, down down their secret uh, passageway, but she did let you know that they have some they have some secret Polyjuice potion esque uh, concoction, which uh, uh, means that the uh, Horegar who was upstairs being arrested is not the real Horegar. That guy's still yet to come. Uh, uh, she helped you, uh, along with Tombar's brilliance uh, and a little bit of help from Salen, you managed to uh, get into that last chamber, open up a secret passageway, uh, and make a move further down into this uh, into the secret underground, underground passage, leading you do not know where into the city. That is where we are now, but we are going to cut away from the majority of the band as they make their way down this long, long passage. Um, and we're gonna cut back to a few hours earlier when Lydiana jumps into the portal and into the realm of nightmares. Uh, Lydiana, um, you find yourself in this same sort of uh, landscape you, uh, you you experienced before. It's, it, it's that black sand and dust uh, that extends outward in a dark reflection of the city, spiraling up in little dust devils. And you see that sort of a tunnel uh, has been, is sort of being maintained. There's something that keeps uh, the forces of nightmare from coming closer in this uh, passageway that leads further out into the city. Uh, you are currently alone uh, here. And uh, you, uh, you are fully here. You are fully uh, untethered, your, your mortal body is here as well as your dreaming one. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> uh, what would you like to do here? So <clears throat> what, what can, 
what can she see? Is the portal kind of still open? Is there any anyone else there, or is it is it just kind of vastly empty? What is it? What does the landscape look like in comparison to before? Um, the portal closes behind you, and the the sounds of uh, battle fade. Um, there is no body immediately in the vicinity, but you can see uh, again, like sort of at the edges of where this this very wide, uh, I want to say, uh, like a hundred feet wide uh, corridor. Um, and when I say corridor, I just mean that beyond that is this black, writhing uh, chaos of nightmare of bone and. Uh, and tentacle and deep things that move down here. Uh, the stuff of nightmares constantly being generated and changing uh, and shifting. And way above you, uh, there's a little bit of, of clearer space and you can see the bottoms of what look like ships and ghosts and things seem to be moving at the higher levels, but you are down almost at the bottom of like an ocean here. Okay. Well, she, um, yeah, she certainly, she certainly felt like she definitely wanted or needed to be through that again. Um, but I think she just suddenly feels uh, <clears throat> conf kind of confused at why she she thought that, but at the same time, she's she's kind of wholly content. I think she's kind of adamant to. Uh, to kind of ex explore this. She feels more comfortable than she did before when she came through. Um, but I think she'd just like to um, kind of explore a little bit, but she's kind of trembling with her, uh, uh, her hand on her whip, I reckon on her on her waist as yeah. she does it. 100%. Uh, 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 as you're exploring, are you looking to explore further, like to the sides where this like nightmare stuff is, or are you trying to like follow this corridor? Uh, corridor, down? yeah, definitely the, the the corridor. She's she, she she's scared enough, kind of being where she is in a way. I, I think she she would definitely follow the path. She's not kind of feeling wholly confident to jump in the tentacles at the minute. <laughs> Probably a good idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you follow this corridor and there's a strange sensation of distance and time passing you by. Uh, it's, it's not like you teleport or move quickly, but it's just like that time that it takes to move that distance just flows past you, flows past your consciousness. Um, and what feels to you like a couple of seconds later, uh, you have moved through the city. Um, you, you see that the dark buildings as you uh, pass them devoid of uh, anything uh, at all uh, and move out and you see this, uh, the inn where you first met Sally out on the road. Um, back before you got into uh, Menaceal, when you had that, that first dream uh, and she gave you the knife and you first confronted that uh, other version of yourself. Um, I think, yeah, an area known or familiar is definitely enticing. I think she follows, she follows yeah, her instinct and, and, and walks towards the end of somewhere that she she recognizes. Um I think you you go in. Um the more time you spend here, the the more that, that sensation of uh that you were safe, that, that you needed not to be afraid as leaving you. Um, that that kind of giddiness that you experienced during that, that fight, uh, the foundation of it is starting to slowly ebb away and you can feel that terror that you usually experience starting to return with this place. There's 
what sound you can hear is very indistinct, almost like it's coming through water, but it's very eerie. Um, just sort of in the background, whispers mm. and just slight movements and tiny little patters. And you can tell that they're further away from you. They're, they won't come into this corridor, but that's the environment, the atmosphere mm. in this place. Okay. Well, I think she feels a, a closer sense of um, familiarity and it kind of runs towards the uh, kind of feels her feet kind of dragging her, her towards the, the window. She's really, she's kind of quite concerned about what she's going to see through that, but she just doesn't want to go through the door and make a scene at the moment. She just wants to kind of peer through. Um, you peer through and um, at first, nothing, just an empty room, uh, empty bar, but you see shadows start to flicker in here. And from one corner, sort of manifesting, almost smoke-like, is a hound of darkness. And the, the hound just sniffs the air and points its nose in your direction. So it's, not, it, it's inside and you can notice me through the, it through is, the window. It smelled you, yeah. It hasn't um, done anything. It's not. It doesn't look aggressive. It's just noticed you. Is it just the hand, or is there any other shapes in, in in the room? Does it? I mean, does it? Does it look like the same room as when she stepped in? Stepped into that place before. Uh, this looks like the ground floor of that inn, and you were upstairs, sort of near to where your room would have been. And is there any other shapes, or is it just the hand? Uh, give me, give me a perception roll. Perception or investigation, whichever you prefer. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 18. Amazing. Um, you, from your, from the angles that you can get, you can only see the one dog, but you can hear uh, that there is, there is the movement of somebody with two legs. Uh, inside and they are approaching the door the door from, from the inside okay um okay so she she kind of she's quite scared scared at what she'll she'll see there's so there's somewhere she can kind of just hide bet hide behind a little corner there and and, and wait for that whatever that person whatever that thing's gonna be yeah absolutely you you just hide behind the corner of the building um, yeah. and get a good look at the door. The door opens outward, figure steps out, and you see a face you recognize, Shadison the Tiefling, eyes clouded over with a black mist, turns his face towards you. Okay. And He's waiting for you. She um, she kind of pulls her head up um, and almost feels a bit concerned about the fact that her feet are kind of dragging herself towards him. And um, she thinks even though she's behind that corner, the hound, him walking towards the door, it, she, there's nowhere she can go. She just kind of puts her head up, one hand right on the on, on the on her weapon on her hip, and, and, and kind of just slowly walks uh, towards the door. Uh, as Shadison turns and leads the way back inside, you see that from his stomach there extends a little silver thread leading upward uh, up the stairs into the second floor. She, she follows, she recognizes that 
And again, just like when she saw the tavern, she's um, attracted to fim- something familiar and, and, and uh, follows him. Um, inside, uh, you're led sort of, uh, this this inn has a couple of uh, different sort of, uh, there's the sort of the main area with the bar and then there's sort of like a back room with, with sort of just a, just a table where people could, could rent out just to eat a little bit more privately. Um, back there, waiting for you, Shadison leads you uh, into that room. Uh, at the opposite end, the head of the table, sits Brandon Lagazi, and uh, beside him sits Sally, the halfling. Welcome. Uh, We've been waiting. What am I doing here? Very good question. You are like us, Sally and I. We'd like to help you. We'd like for you to help us if you can. What's the deal? Just just for you to sit, Shadison pulls a chair out for you. She sits down. Uh, with a wave of his hand, uh, Brandon dismisses Shadison, and Shadison leaves this room. <clears throat> uh, you can see that uh, both Brandon and Sally both have these silver threads uh, leading out uh, of their stomachs and up the stairs as well. You were born as were the two of us, with a connection to this place, to the nightmare realm. It took an awful lot for me, says Brandon, to come to terms and overcome the fear that I was born with. Thankfully, it can be taught, and I sought out others like myself found Sally here. I find others as well who can be of use, but none is so powerful as you, Lydiana. The deal is very simple. You will never have to be afraid of your powers again. And like myself and like Sally, you will use them however you see fit. They will make you strong. We have something we'd like for you to do for us. It's very simple. It poses very little risk to yourself. And it will be done within 24 hours. You said it poses no risk to anyone but myself. It poses very little risk to yourself. Mm. And who else? Who else does it pose a risk to? Mm. (sighs) You know by now that I work for and am part of the Lagazi Cabal. Is that right? Mm Mm-hmm. What perhaps you don't know is we have reached an arrangement with the Guresh family of Arohan. Well, they act as proxies for the king. We have a problem, the two of us, a mutual problem, and that is the general and the city of Medicine. While the general stands at the border, the Aruhani cannot enact a certain plan that they have had in the works for a very long time. And the general has been a thorn in the side of the cabal for far too long. 
we've come up with a plan that will allow each party to equally blame the other and therefore everyone gets away scot-free in the end. We are going to take the city. And you have already seen how we're going to do it. Cauldron in the right place, the right time with you as its conduit. The entire city will be temporarily overrun with the undead, with ghosts. Uh, in the end, everyone will be alive, will be fine. Uh, the, the ghosts don't kill, as it were. But the general goes, and the city is unresponsive to the border for a certain duration of time. What's in this for me? Friendship with me. I can offer you safety, protection, a good line of work after all of this, teach you to master your abilities as I have mastered them. Comradeship with Sally and myself. You need not be afraid anymore, Lidiana. If you can stop me being afraid, that's probably the, uh, the best reward out there. I understand well <clears throat> how enticing that must be to you. So what we would ask for you to do is to go back. Uh, since you have come full bodied into this realm, you're going to have to go back the same way you came. Uh, we are arranging for the portal to be reopened back uh, near the cauldron. And then you will uh, be sent along with it to a predetermined location and be and used as the conduit so that the cauldron may uh, use its full abilities and spread over the entirety of the city. And what does it exactly mean to be the conduit? What do I have to do? In theory, any one of us three, himself, Sally and you could act as the conduit. It just needs somebody with a connection to the nightmare realm. The problem is that neither Sally nor I, even with the general gone, can enter the city uh, without certain safeguards being activated. You, on the other hand, have, uh, there are no such restrictions on. There are no such wards against you. Uh, It'll be the same as before. You will feel the same safety from the ghosts, the elation, this power. Uh, the cauldron, the cauldron is called the cauldron of wayward dreams. And ordinarily it gives one a glimpse into the nightmare realm, uh, allows you to see the nightmares of others through a conduit such as yourself, a true connection is established and the ghosts who have not yet uh, gone to one of the eight heavens and hells or uh, or have been rejected therefrom can come through into the living world and experience once again what it's like to have a body for a little while. <clears throat> it's tempting, I'll, I'll, I'll take you up on this. Very good to hear. Very good to hear indeed. You, you have no idea what relief that is, Lidiana. <laughs> um, she kind of rolls her eyes as if to say, it's your relief. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that being said, uh, Sally can escort you back to the end of our little corridor 
and you can return to the mortal world. Uh, this is all going to be over relatively soon. And if, if your friends your friends surrender, they don't have to be hurt in any way. Surrender in what way? I can't vouch for what the Goreshes will do to them if the Goreshes are uh, involved. Uh, but if, as far as the Cauldron is concerned, nobody will die. Everybody will simply be possessed for a small amount of time. So I can't vouch for the Goreshes and what they will or will not do in regards to your band, but they know that you must be kept safe. They should you said send this you. was win-win. It is a win-win. I'm just saying the third party does not have uh, any specific instructions when it comes to your party. Mm, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, she takes it up. She takes, yeah, she takes it up and starts heading towards where she came from. I calls after you. As far as we're concerned, you can kill the Goreshes. Everything's <laughs> already in place. <laughs> she kind of um, just um, waves her hand a bit like the uh, the queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sally, go with her for a little, just just for a little safety, will you? Um, safety, Sally, who's been kind of quiet this whole time, uh, gets up uh, and follows along after you. Uh, Lidiana kind of looks at her, snarls, and said, this is the least you can do. Sally looks at you. Yeah, you're learning quick, huh? <laughs> um, distance <sighs> distends, and you are back at a certain location. Um, Sally will say to you, the next time that the cauldron reaches out to you, I'll be waiting and you will have to do the same thing you did before. Um, you're, the other you will show up again. Just fair warning. <laughs> she kind of nods and kind of takes, she kind of swallows her, swallows and uh, just kind of nods. Lidiana, um, your one of your allies I don't think I'd be alive if he was if he didn't show a certain degree of clemency toward me. Um whatever's waiting for you on the other side, I I hope they make it through okay. Okay. Portal opens up near where you are. See you soon, kid. She backs into it. And we're going to cut over to everybody else. <laughs> um... The rest of the band, you uh, have traveled down uh, this uh, underground passageway. Uh, fairly sure that you are, uh, you are not that far behind uh, the, the party that have, have gone ahead of you. Uh, I'd say that you follow this for about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and soon you start to hear uh, voices uh, and the general sounds of like a larger chamber uh, echoing down this corridor back at you and you see light coming from uh, the end. The, 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 the underground passage has been uh, has been lit with torches sort of the whole way, but like an, ex, uh, an end of the, uh, of the passage uh, comes into sight. Um, 
Ulani and her Kenseis take the forefront uh, as you start to get close. Anything you would like to do in this moment, I pass it to you. Mm, right. <clears throat> well, I've got a floor plan here. Uh, you, it, just before you get into the chamber, you don't have the floor plan. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, cool. Um, well... I'm going to make sure everyone's being quiet because we are better off being sneaky because of our people. <clears throat> yeah. Can I use my mage hand to good use? Because it's invisible too. So maybe I can like do some. <laughs> um, if you want to use trickery, your mage hand like, to like, deal? yeah, to like turn, like to. Uh, extinguish one of the torches, like the torch at the end of the corridor, so you like come out of an area of darkness. You could do that. Oh yeah, yeah. So I want to use my mage hand and make some darkness happen. Uh, but where's? Because like we we're, we're here at the corridor. Yeah. So you are and... you imagine that that goes back a little ways, and you are just you know, 40 feet yeah. further down. Yeah, because, like, if I wanted to, maybe, like, I'm just going to move my pointer to show you. I'm trying to think strategically which would be the most useful light to put out. Oh, um, we'll just state, like, just a just a torch at the end of that passage. Not not in the chamber, but but behind. Oh, in the, oh right, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I'll say that that... That on its own will give everybody like a plus two to their stealth rolls for a group stealth check. Um, nice. Uh, well, uh, Joe, that. while you were gone, uh, we've cut back to all of you guys. You are just in the corridor before getting to this chamber. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to ask for a stealth roll from everybody. But if there's anything anybody else would like to do before heading in to combat, go for it. Yeah, I'm going to buff myself up with a bit of um, mage armor beforehand. Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> Is there anybody else that's particularly softy that would probably benefit? Yes, please. Your AC. My AC is 11. 13 plus your dex modifier. Yeah, so it would be 13. My armor class is 15. Oh, so um, is your dex zero? Yeah. Wow. My armor class is 15. Fab. Okay, so only Joe's probably going to benefit. Uh, uh, yeah, I touch up. Um, uh, I touch myself up. A bit of <laughs> and then uh, Caradoc is going to get a little bit of mage armor as well. Mm, I didn't change my. I haven't changed my name. Um, <laughs> I've, also got, I've also got a shield. Can I just use that on myself or anyone near me as well? I thought that you bought the shield for Lydiana. No, cause, no, but I've also got. Like, oh, a you mean the spell the shield? Um, yeah, got it. Uh, I did get you a shield there, Lydiana. <laughs> Remember that. Thanks so much. I've been editing the episodes leading up to this, so I, I re I'm remembering <laughs> some that. stuff that's happened. Um, um, you, that you do have the date. That was on your date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy. <laughs> um, uh, basically the way the shield spell works is like when somebody goes to hit you you use your reaction to cast that okay um, Josh yes sir are we, are we applying that well, can we apply that same uh, mechanic that we talked about with finding mushrooms oh absolutely yeah 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 <laughs> If there's any fungus molds or spores in these dirty corridors. Oh, uh, 100%. Uh, give gonna me, do some shrooms. Give me a good old investigation roll. I would say you have had a half an hour with advantage. Um, I, uh, just when, oh no, that's traveling for an hour or more. Never mind. I could have maybe helped you out. I think Vikings used to do that. They used to do shrooms before battle. Makes yeah, sense. Like, take the edge off. <laughs> like, I would. Let's trip and like fuck some shit up. 
That's where the, the berserker myth comes from. Because mm. they used to eat they used yeah. to eat fly agaric and it made them like insane. Yeah. It wasn't like hallucinogen, it was like rage. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I do that before right. cutting hair. <laughs> 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 oh, glorious. That's what Joseph said. Are you like, <laughs> <laughs> really I'm scared to come back, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, um, but yeah, roll 15, bro. 15? Uh, cool. Uh, I will say with, with a 15, you'll just roll uh, once on the, uh, on the Tasha's table and see what kind of mushroom you get. Fabulous. Let me just get back to my character sheets. Uh, I love when you do this because I always like go myself to check out the Taj. Is like, which one is this time? I would it, too, but my books are actually further away from me now. Oh no! It's ten. Isn't you it? moved into a new house. It's a D10, and then oh. potentially followed by another room. I'm never doing it again after ten. It's Mr. Blobby. This is a, a roll of one. Okay. Oh. I think that's the pink and yellow. I, uh, oh, yeah, no, it is. yeah, I think so. Uh, no worries. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that stashed away in my pocket and I'm sure I'll find some use for it. I think, oh, yeah. I think roll, uh, well, you won't know. I think, yeah, when you take it, roll the d4 and you'll see what you turn <laughs> into. Yeah. Good prank potential on that one. Good prank potential, for sure. Actually, you know what? Roll the d4 now so you know what the effect is going to be before you eat it. Because I can spike somebody else, can't I? Because you can well. spike someone else, yeah. Uh, and turning this one someone else will into... be a four. Is that the Mr. Floppy one? <laughs> yeah. That's is that twice in the same yeah. game? <laughs> yeah. What can I say? All right, mate. So I've got another Mr. Blobby shroom here. <laughs> Lidiana like uh, sews her lips together. <laughs> <laughs> um that's that's so funny. I guess they're just local to the area. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People know to stay away from them. Loads of kids, like you know, just bloody stick them in each other's sandwiches and shit. <laughs> <laughs> the clerics are constantly having to just on their off hours deal, or not on their off, but like deal with kids coming in and being like, "We're permanently pink." <laughs> Ideal. What I love is that Greater Restoration like costs a decent amount of money. <laughs> oh, it's so much money! It's, wow. it's hundred it's... gold, uh, hundred gold pieces worth of diamond dust. <laughs> I got that over like all miss. Oh lord. Um. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Not at all. Anything else from anyone uh, before going in? Going in. Oh, all right. Can I get from everybody except Lydiana a group stealth check? Uh, right. D20 plus your stealth. Thank God it's not Lydiana. <laughs> <laughs> the 12 for uh, Sam. Ooh. Plus stealth. Three. Um, that's 21. I need. I'm, I'll be right back. 16. 21, 16, 13. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, do we add plus two to this? Yes, I'm giving everyone light? a plus two to this. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, 18, so then, then, yeah, 22. Yeah. 18 then for me. 11 Great. for Nurgle. 11 for Nurgle. Okay. Uh, I think overall everybody has... <laughs> Perception rolls on the other end were not great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you are all, uh, you are all hidden as you approach this chamber. I will say that you, uh, you're able to get to the mouth of this uh, passageway and see the fullness of this chamber. So you guys see uh, in the center of this uh, ritual circle uh, amidst these pillars which hold up the ceiling, uh, Horegar Goresh decked out in red and black robes, uh, wearing uh, a, a black plated uh, segmented mask uh, over his uh, helmet over his head, uh, carrying uh, in one hand a staff with the symbol of Leviathar in, 
in another, uh, his gauntleted hand holds a book from which he reads over this cauldron. Um, you see uh, these other Sun Soul monks uh, decked out in the same sort of geese that you saw them in uh, before, same sort of uniform as the as the ones who attacked you at the, or rather that you attacked uh, at the warehouse. Uh, I'm just going to close Facebook on my computer. Um, there we go. Uh, and then further away across this uh, ritual circle from you in that corner, in a pool of uh, light that comes down from a uh, from a, a hole in the ceiling somewhere up above, uh, you see uh, two of these sort of like masked iron consoles and Edgar Galanis slash Goresh. I actually didn't know what to call him just then. Uh, <laughs> um, Story of my life. <laughs> Story. Edgar, dad. Dad? Mr. Galanis. <laughs> <laughs> um... You can see that he has swapped out his uh, his green um, Zero Task Force uniform for more like paladin plate mail. Um, he and it's it's very much silver. Uh, he he's sort of foregone the livery of the country of Gorendia and the Zero Task Force in this moment. To clarify, however, he is not wearing the livery of Aruhan or of Bane. He is undecorated in any symbol. Um, Interesting. And while the picture that I found looks cool and awesome, he is not wearing a mask in this, uh, a helmet in this moment. Um, so he is over there. Uh, the three of those guys over there each have uh, those cages with the blindfolded uh, blink dog pups. Um, and uh, like, like that. So you guys are as of yet unseen. You are uh, just at the mouth of that corridor. Um, it looks like it looks like whatever Horegar's doing is almost at its completion, and it looks like Edgar Galanis is about to leave. What do you do? I attack Horegar. Where's Edgar Galanis? Uh, he's in the top right. How far can we move at a time? You can move 30 feet in a round. Uh, can I cast Spike Growth? Everybody, roll initiative! Bless you for doing that, because that was my other option, and I'm so glad you did that, thank you! Oh dear. My initiative's not great. Okay, cool. Cool stuff. Um, any chance you would have at a surprise round is unfortunately dashed by the fact that the first person to go in the initiative is going to be Master Ulani and her Kensei monks. Um, these guys see... Uh, Lonnie specifically sees that Edgar Goresh is about to get out of there um, and moves into the kind of dash that only a monk can achieve. Um, it is how far from her to him? It is a an exact 80 feet. Uh, she uh, sets off and with uh, the use of a bonus action, uh, just rushes, oops, oh, somebody lost their blink dog. Uh, it's over by Sunsoul too, there you are. Yeah, uh, rushes at him. You see like in a blur of speed, uh, she moves this Triton closing in with uh, Edgar Goresh, a canister coming out of, um, uh, sort of uh, something coming out, unfolding a trident out of it, uh, going for uh, a stab. You see Gwen, your father sees her incoming, looks, and even as she's closing, looks beyond her and straight at you and meets your eyes. Her trident passes through him 
He is ethereal and it does nothing to him. He finishes saying the words. Him, the two consoles, and Master Rulani vanish and are gone. Right? Bye bye. Goodbye. Uh, just give me a second to get those guys out of there. There's a little pool of light to mark where they went. Oops. Okay. They are gone. These Kenseis uh, it rush into battle uh, and uh, take out various weapons and close with the Sun Souls. Boom. Boom. That is going to be their turn. They have engaged those enemies. The next to go is Hragar. Uh, oh. As Hragar finishes this incantation, the cauldron glows with power. And who should appear from out of a portal that opens up but Lydiana? Boom. Uh, oh. Backing out facing Hragar uh, away from the rest of y'all. Uh, Lydiana, you are here. You are in uh, this combat. Uh, Hragar finishes his incantation um, and the, the, the uh, portal closes. The cauldron loses its uh, life uh, briefly. That is, uh, I, I think he's actually gonna, is he gonna, is he get to go? No, here's what he's gonna do. Um, you, you see that just magic coalesces around him. Um, the air sort of around him starts to shimmer. Uh, he has put shield of faith on himself as well as another spell. Um, which was already there from earlier. In initiative order, the next person to go is Lydia. You've just stepped backward out of this portal, uh, away from uh, away from Sally. Much more time has passed in the Nightmare Realm than, uh, than uh, it appeared to you. You find yourself facing this <laughs> this priest of Bane, uh, this cleric, uh, in the middle of a fight, and behind you are all of your companions uh, coming out of the darkness. What do you do? Um, she's dizzy, feeling sick, and pretty freaked out. So she is going to... <clears throat> Forgive me, just explain the... Uh, the difference between the X's and, and the hands on the left, and well, everywhere. But. Uh, no worries. Uh, the the hands represent the Sun Soul monks who belong to uh, the yeah. the Goresh faction, the Arahani, uh, and the others are the Kensei monks who were part of Master Ulani's uh, monastery. Um, and it, those are they are they are each monks of a similar level, but of different schools basically, and they are engaged with one another. Uh, the Kensei monks are using weapons. The Sun Souls are, are just using their fists, but are shooting like radiant blasts of energy, uh, blasts of key out of their hands. And feet. In a, any direction, or just generally? Just generally. Yeah. Okay, well, she comes out at some speed. She's kind of spinning around um, and um, just looking dizzy and portal sick. Um, she kind of takes a couple of steps back um, and holds out her hands, um, but it, it, it's kind of swinging all around. She points in the direction of uh, the uh, my companions and then also the people. Around the okay. Yeah, 16 is their armor class. So you hit with your Eldritch Blast. Brilliant. So damage will be just a five. Five <laughs> points of damage into that she, one. After she does that, she's still kind of got momentum and backs away to about here. And that is your turn. Uh, next up in the initiative order is Nurgle Shroombeard. 
Hello. Um, I'm going to try and be a big fat smart ass now and see if I can do something with some of these spells that I haven't had a chance to use yet. Uh, so he's a cleric, isn't he? He is uh, a cleric, right. yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have a crack at it. Uh, I would like to cast Phantasmal Force. Uh, <laughs> Baby. On, uh, just making sure he's in within range. Bear with 60 foot. Let me just check. Oh, he's within. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's within range. So uh, I've got a 10 foot cube. Um, I can cast sort of any kind of thing um, on to. Um, how would I pronounce it? Haragar, is that it? Uh, yeah, Haragar. Hragar, Hragar, so, either would be fine. Yeah. What I'm going to do is within this ten foot cube, I'm going to I'm going to cast as long as he doesn't beat uh, my spell DC, uh, that he is going to be like standing in this ten foot cube, but he's on a very small plinth, and the rest of it is is all falling away around him, and around his head is a cage, and it's full of killer bees. <laughs> basically um, amazing oh uh, um, yeah truly amazing uh is there a saving throw for this yes please so it's an intelligent saving throw and you need to be oh, let me just get my character sheet uh 16 intelligence it's fine but it he doesn't have proficiency not gonna make that i'm afraid <laughs> very cool so he believes he's standing on a like pillar of earth and around him the force fallen away and around his head is a is a cage of bees I can't, yeah like if you've ever seen the wicker man with uh <laughs> with this cage let the bees and they're pouring bees into this like wicker cage above his head and they're like crawling into his mouth into his eyes like nose everything like that oh boy he oh, takes boy. damage from this if it could theoretically damage him, right? Yeah. One uh, psychic damage, I believe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love um, this spell. Phantasmal okay. Force is actually one of my favorite spells. Um, I love it so much. Each round on your turn, the Phantom could deal 1d6 psychic damage to the target if it is with the Phantoms. Wow. Uh, would you like to roll a d6 of damage to Rhaegar to start us off? I've already done it, and it's a three. Three points of damage to Rhaegar. <laughs> That's three bees three in his bees. face. <laughs> three stings. Um, English you, picnic, basically. Yeah, you hear you hear very clearly ringing out this, um, like, you know, the finishing of this ritual, uh, this portal opens up. <laughs> Ah, yes, the band have come, and I will display the powers of my god. Oh! Oh, god. <laughs> Bane, preserve me! What's happening? Eat um. bees, baby. I <laughs> <laughs> don't really like hornets or. Huh? Hornets. Oh, oh. Just, just any kind of stinging flying yeah. insect will do. Oh, that's that is, mwah, I love it. Anything else for your turn? Uh, no, I'm good, bro. I wish I had some like fucking really sick bee-related pun or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll <not>. be back. <laughs> <laughs> be my guest. <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Um. Next up is actually going to be Gwen. Hey. Uh, I'm just checking something. Actually, actually, before you go, um, Horegar is going to start using legendary actions. Um, yeah, he doesn't have he doesn't have a legendary action that says that he can investigate an illusory cage of bees around his head. Otherwise, that's what he would do. Um, <laughs> I think I think he's going to um I think he's just gonna cast uh he's just gonna cast mass healing word. That's what he's gonna do. Uh so he's just gonna recover himself and uh and give his allies um 
Let's just let's just double check that I'm not BSing that they are within range of a mess. Healing word. Word. Oh, it's 60 feet range. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that while the uh, Sun Soul monks are engaged with the Kensei, uh, their wounds start <coughs> closing even as they're being made. And he regains those three uh, hit points that he's just lost. Um, cool. Gwen, that's your turn. Okay. Um, so. I am going to attack Rhaegar. Yep. Um, sorry, I'm just having like a, a, a brain there. You know when you think something was on your character sheet and then you go and look and you're like, it's not there. And why did I have the, it in my head that that was the thing anyway? Um, so I'm just uh, confirming that that's not a thing. Uh, but I will attack him and I am hidden. You said we were hidden, yep. so I get advantage. Sure thing. And it is the you first did. turn of combat. Okay, so it's gonna be so many, Josh. <laughs> Twenty nine thirty two. <laughs> Thirty one? Thirty one. Cause I rolled eight eighteen plus nine for my longbow is twenty seven plus four because he's a humanoid holy moly right? uh yeah okay um okie dokie i'm going to roll uh, no 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 first thing i do is bonus action hunter's mark before that <laughs> you go yes, uh okie dokie sorry everyone I have done that, and so now I will roll. Okay, that was a uh, uh, twelve points of damage. Yep. And then I don't know if this will hit. It will be oh sixteen. Sixteen. Well, okay. Give me one second. You hit him. Uh, you hit him for twelve. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, sixteen's not going to do it. Okay, um, and because it's the first uh, turn of combat, uh, I'm going to make an additional weapon attack. The uh, way better, but not as good as the first one. Uh, 25. Yes, that will hit. Okay, so I believe how that works it says the word you can make weapon can take an additional d8 of the weapon's image type so is that d8 for the the long bow plus the additional d8 plus the hunter's mark that's correct oh my connection's unstable okay it's okay cool. i got gotcha. you yep yep so 2d8 plus hunter's mark i believe is what you're plus your damage of yeah <laughs> yeah 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 um so that's going to be 15 points of damage. Another 15. Wow. Amazing. And Amazing. These are all non lethal damage. Gotcha. Um, Gwen, this may be the most effective in combat you have been uh, yet. Uh, in fact, it definitely is. Um, even even from the warehouse fight, you can tell um, you have you now know and have experience of how humans and humanoids move and fight much better than you did before. Um, and with just like incredible pinpoint accuracy, one, uh, one of these arrows glances off the sort of like magical barrier he's put around himself, but the other two like just pierce right through uh, and hit home. Uh, you hear him cry out in pain, it, uh, and uh, you you look like you've done a pretty significant amount of damage to him over the course of this round. Cool. And then with my movement, which I can do forty feet this round, I am going to back up and kind of hug the right wall so I maybe get some cover. Brilliant. 
Good stuff. Uh, but stay within the short range of my longbow. I'm just going to do there, but I'm further back than that. Um, you see all of these uh, sun soul uh, monks who are engaged with these kensei um, simultaneously uh, or relatively simultaneously, depending on like where they are in combat, uh, let loose like a jet of flames uh, with their hands. None of you guys are within range of any of that. Um, but you can just see that like, as far as those individual combats are going, the Kenseis are not doing well. Their enemies have healed from their initial assault and now they are being burned. Um, ordinarily, these guys would probably, probably in one-on-one -on -one be able to take these Sun Soul monks, especially since Sun Souls are supposed to be a little bit more long range. Um, but just the situation as it is, um, these guys aren't going to last much longer. Uh, that is their turn done. Ursan, you're up. Beans. I'm going to, I think I'm going to move over just here-ish, so I can have line of sight on her radar there. Dodger's going to follow me. Oh, yes. Um, and then I'm going to just make a, just a normal attack, but I'm going to cast Hail of Thorns as well <laughs> I love Gregor. it so yeah oh, sorry, roll to attack what was that uh, Ralph sorry I moved the cauldron by accident <laughs> uh, just put it back. I was just innately talking apologies no all good and sorry Joe for ever talking to you there's a three hit <laughs> Actually, it's not three, it's an eight. But uh, eight does hit. not hit, no. Right, well, I'm going to go for my second attack then, because I get two attacks. Brilliant. Oh, my, my dice has fallen off the table, and it's plus five. 21. Does 21 hit? 21 does hit. Yay. Uh, um, he's going to make a dexterity saving throw against your Hail of Thorns and fails. Yay. Uh, so he takes 1d10 piercing damage. Yeah, on top of your other stuff that you did. Yeah. So we'll do, we'll do, the, uh, we'll do the bow damage first. So that's just 1d8. That's d8. That's d8. So that's 4 damage for the just the bow. And then the D10. This one? Yes. That's five damage. That's nine damage. Uh, so what's the total? Forgive me. Uh, nine, what was the first number you said? Nine, nine's the total. So it's four and five. Four and five. Nine in total. One yeah. Oh, four. Um, yeah. Uh, same kind of deal. One arrow goes wide. Uh, the other one pierces and then just erupts into thorns um, beneath that uh, protective barrier. Yeah. Cool beans. Uh, Tombar, you're up next. Sweet. What do we got? Do we go magic? Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go right for Kragar. Yep, 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 Let's, yep. Can I just like toll the dead on him? One hundred percent, you can toll the dead on him. Let's bring out the big guns. Yes, sir. Which saving throw is toll? Or do I go chromatic or wisdom? Which is gonna, which is bound to mess him up more? Uh. You'll be dealing 2d12 if he fails his saving throw with Told the Dead, or you'll be doing the damage of a chromatic orb. Uh, let's have a quick peek. Told the Dead is going to be higher in air. I think Told the Dead's going to be yeah, better. Yeah, let's, let's, let's Told some Dead then. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, sweet. Okay, he's going to make a wisdom saving throw. He is good at these because he is a cleric. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to be a 24, so he's going to beat... Uh, and he's not going to take any damage from this Toll of the Dead. Oh, dear. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we, we hear the toll, um, 
but he, he, this person is crackling with so much divine magic that that uh, that the vibrations that usually uh, would pierce through do not get to him, and he does not take the damage. He's got ears full of bees. He's got ears full of bees anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else from Tom Bar? That was your action. You can still move. Take a bonus action. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna like see what we got here. I'm gonna take cover. How far can I move? Uh, you can move a total of thirty feet, so six squares. Can I just pop myself behind this pillar? Take cover. Uh, which pillar is that? Move your character to... There you go. Yes, absolutely you can. Is that groovy? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I think I just... Yeah, exactly what you just did. It's perfect. Um, go ahead and roll me a stealth check for uh, your, the hide action as your bonus action. Stealth check. Stealth check. Stealth check. Ooh, natural 20. Ooh! Uh, Tomar sends yeah. off this uh, spell and then goes behind this pillar and just cloak of darkness. Uh, vanishes from the yeah, fight. Yeah, boy. Amazing. Oh, well, that was fun. that was really good there, Tom Barr. You're really coming into this. You're coming into your own. Uh, says short oh, sample. Yeah. Uh, Isabin, you are last in the initiative order. But not least. But hardly least. least. In, <laughs> in, in stature. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, where am I? You oh, are no. just beside Nurgle. Oh, there I am. Um, hi, Nurgle. Come and stand next to your auntie, Nurgle. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Right. So, basically, I think I can do two things, but I, I want to clarify. So, right. I think I can do sneak attack, and I think I can do disarming attack. Is that true? 100% this is true. Cool. So, I would like to, I'd like to attack one. I'd like to try and help one of our gods. So, I was going to go to Sun Soul. One of the Sun Souls, maybe Sun Soul Four. Can I reach Sun Soul Four? Um, that's a long way. What you what okay, you do I have can do is a nearer you, one. you've got twenty five feet of movement, and you can double that with a bonus action to dash, and then still get your attack in. So you've got fifty feet from where you are. Okay. Um, where is the scale on this? How do I? T how can I tell where? How far things are away from um, me? If you go down the side um, under the hand cloud brush, there is a uh, little icon that's a measuring tool. It looks like a, some stairs. Oh yes. Uh, if you click on that, you can measure from yourself and see exactly oh how far God, away from like you. That's like amazing. It's beautiful. Never knew that existed. That's so cool. It's it's very oh, nice. That's, so that one's seventy feet. I thought you are. You are. Too too far. Hang on. It wasn't important anyway. The butte <laughs> saved you all from me. Talk about my love of measuring tools. <laughs> Play with it while oh. everyone's taking their turns. The one thing I will say, Isabin, is you absolutely could have held on to that crossbow you got in the previous fight, so you don't need to make it the entire way. You can get a sneak attack on a crossbow shot, if you would like. Okay. And now I can't seem to turn off the measuring tool. Uh, just uh, click, click up on the, on the hand. hand. On the hand, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's go for the furthest away one then, if I can shoot. Can I, can I aim at Sun Soul 4 then? Uh, you can. How far does a hand crossbow go? One sec. Let's find out. Because uh, there's a range on it. Uh -huh. Range of 30 feet. So if you if you want to go for Sun Soul 4, I believe I believe if you move, take a dash, and then shoot, you can hit you can hit Sun Soul 4. Yes. Okay, so if I I let move like half half the way about there. Yeah. Is that right? That seems seems right, and then and then you've got a shot, absolutely, 100%. Okay, so now uh, am I rolling a d20? You're rolling a d20, and you're going to add your dexterity modifier and your proficiency bonus to the attack. Does she get advantage because she was hidden? 
Dexterity and what? Proficiency. No, because she's moved and everyone's had a chance to see her. Um. So I have got 23. 23 is going to hit that sun soul. 100%. Awesome. And then is that for the hand... end of my turn, or can I do more stuff? With a hand crossbow, you you can roll damage now. So you roll one d6 damage for the hand crossbow, and then uh, I believe it's an additional three d6 at this level, or is it two d6? Somebody who knows rogues can help me out here. I feel like it might be two d6, but I could be wrong. I know we checked recently, but then leveling up happened. No, it's three d6 on top of that. So you're going to roll 4d6 of damage, if you'd be so kind, and then add your dexterity modifier to that. And that's the amount of damage you deal. Fucking loads, basically. Yeah, loads and loads of damage. <laughs> I love rogues so much. It's very I, four, I rolled 4d6s. Yep. Oh, no, hang on. I'm being, I'm being really thick. Sorry, I'm not using this dice thing properly. Right, let's start again. I keep adding modifiers instead of do something else. Right. One, two, three, four. Plus what? <laughs> Plus your dexterity modifier. Uh, 17. 17 points of damage. Holy moly. Um, <laughs> yeah, you see, you see that guy just takes a crossbow bolt to the chest. Looks, he's got a crossbow bolt just sticking out of him. Uh, Yay. It looks like it hurts a lot. <laughs> uh, cries out in pain. Brilliant. That is your turn, Isabin. We're going to go back up to the top. The Kenseis get another turn here, um, which is awesome. They're going to get a plus that. Um, following, following benefits. Uh, what was I trying to make a range attack? We think about more deadly. Um, it was magical. That's right, deal extra damage equal to your martial arts die. Brilliant. Okay, so they're gonna deal. Uh, gee whiz, this is gonna get rough. The Kenseis are. Man, that Sun Soul that you just hit, gone, dead instantly. Um, the other ones start to look much much more hurt uh brutal gee whiz um kensei's man are actually very good uh and don't let anyone tell you otherwise um Hregar's gonna use another uh legendary action because he's not been using them up to this point and that's silly and he only has so much time uh, so he's going to give one to the, at the end of Isabin's and then another one at the end of um, the Kensei's turns. Uh, and he's just going to... He's going to mass healing word again. So... What does that give? Seven back. Okay. This is a bit of a, a, bit of a th thing. Um, Sunsil 4. Sunsil 4 is actually dead, though. Actually gone. Uh, I can't say just ended their life. Um, the other thing Horegar's going to do is, I think he's going to cure wounds on himself. I think that's what he's going to do. Uh, this guy is not to be trifled with. Cure wounds. What did I say he could do? So that's going to be two. Four. Uh, so it's going to be, forgive me. Oh no. Not good. For whom? Not good for you guys. He heals himself <laughs> quite a, quite a lot. <laughs> Second level cure wounds gives himself back uh, 24 hit points. Some big old bullshit. Yeah, really, really bad. Um, okay, those are his legendary actions. Those are the uh, those are the Kensei's turns. Um, 
Prager is going to take his first real turn now. He... He's got bees, man, but he's going to push through, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Absolutely terrifying. Everybody's within 60 feet of him, so he can do this. Um, And he's just going to pick targets. Um, Divine power coalesces around him. He's going to pick Isabin. He's going to pick... Can't see Gwen. Can't see Tom Bar. He's going to pick Nurgle. He's going to pick Ursan. Two more. Can say two. And what do we think? Can say four. What he's going to do? Um, divine power coalesces around him. <sighs> You are all responsible for the deaths of my siblings and of my people. This will not be tolerated. The god of order himself gives me my strength, and I will show you the tenets of pandemonium. Tenet the first, tyranny, uh, blood, pools from down his mask and down his arms and tethers to these five people who have been chosen. Um, This is a mass blood puppet effect. Uh, Essentially what I'm going to need is for everybody to make a constitution saving throw who has been targeted and tell me what you get. I've been targeted? <laughs> you have not been targeted, Tom. Are all those with a red bar? Oh, right. So Ursen, Nurgle, and Isabin. Is this a, con- is this, um, a 20 plus? Your con- whatever you've got in your constitution saving throw box. Just the number in there? The, the oh, modifier, so yeah. The D20 plus that? Yes. I'm really sorry I have to ask this question every time. That's okay. (laughs) No, I have not grasped the numbers. (laughs) 13. Completely fine. Uh, 13 in total. Okay. Yes. So I have zero. Not a con heavy party. (laughs) No. Luckily, I've rolled 18. 18. You pass. Thank God. Six for me. It's six. Yeah. Okay. This is going to get a little bit brutal. <laughs> Neither of the Kenseis passed. Uh, and you guys did not pass. Actually, interestingly enough, I think Nurgle would have been the best person for this to have not worked on. Um, all of you um, uh, who have been targeted. So, uh, Isabin. Half of your movement speed is going to be 12. You can't make it. That's really good. Uh, oh, no, you have a hand crossbow, which means... He's going to grab the door, sorry. That's okay. Okay, yeah, here's what's going to happen. Isabin, you move 10 feet towards Kensei 1. So 1, mm-hmm. 2. And make a crossbow attack against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ursan, you are going to move closer to Nurgle and make a uh, a melee attack. Oh, he's gone. Uh, right? He's going to make a melee attack against Nurgle. Um, Kensei 2 is going to move half their movement speed, which is uh, 50, so they can move 25. Ooh, they don't make it. That's good. Move 25 feet. Make it there. Uh, and I guess they'll throw something. And Kensei number 4, 1, Two, three, four, five. Uh, get an attack of opportunity from the Sun Soul Monk. It's gonna hit damage. Yeah. Okay. And then they're each gonna make attacks against. This hit. Okay. Can't say three is not looking good. Nice. Nice to meet you. 
Kensei 2 missed. And then it's just Isabin. If you could make that uh, crossbow attack against Kensei 1. So roll a d20. Yep. What have I done? Have I done anything? Uh, and oh, uh, Joe, uh, Ursan is, uh, has moved within melee range of Nurgle and is making an attack against Nurgle. Oh, uh, sorry, but a d20, sorry, Ralph. A d20 plus anything? Uh, your dexterity modifier and proficiency. Be kind, Joe. Your good haircuts rely on this throw now. <laughs> I'm kidding. You do, you do what you have to, mate. Go 12. crazy. 12 to hit? Yeah. Uh, 12 does not hit. That's good in this situation. Okay. Oh, yes. I'm not hitting Nurgle. <laughs> so I'm. Am I just doing like a short sword attack? Uh, sure. Yeah. I think a short sword attack that's, would be. That's be what I've got. Yeah. Oh, I'm really sorry. That's a 22. Yeah, that hits very much, Lee. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. So it's a 1d6 plus 3. Yep. Oh, it's 7. Sorry. 7 points of damage. That's fine, bruv. Mm -hmm. Fine. And I better make a concentration saving throw on my spell as well. Yes, sir. Um, that has used up uh, Ursan and Isabin's reactions. Uh, just letting you know that. Uh, so yeah, Haragar, blood puppets. You feel your bodies move against your will and go for your crossbow, go for your sword, and make these attacks. Um, it truly looks like people are marionetting. Uh, as he exerts this control. That's his action for his turn. Uh, Lydiana, you are up after, uh, you are after Horegar. Okay, so using, um, using a bonus action, she will um, curse Horegar with um, Hexblade's curse. Yep. Um, and then she will run in again. Um, <laughs> and she will use her whip to attack with booming blade. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I That's love hot. it. <laughs> that is hot. Okay. Um, Haregar, as you come sort of trying to get bees out of his eyes. Um, tyranny, ha ha ha! Ah, 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 yes, the conduit. Don't worry, we, <laughs> I've been told not to, not to interfere with the Lagazi business. Oh God, uh, go ahead and make your attack. <laughs> um, 15. 15 is not going to hit Hragar. Okay. That's probably lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's it? Okay. Um, that's uh, Lydiana's turn. Nurgle, you are up next. Fabulous. So is it only... Um... Have I already got, uh, who have I got on me? I've just got Ursan on me, and I? But he's no longer being puppeted. He's not going oh, to, wow. yeah, he's not going to take opportunity attacks against you or anything like that. Good. Uh, how's my bee helmet doing on, um, Harigar? <laughs> oh, uh, go ahead and roll that damage. Uh, I, I, does he have to use, wait, does he get a saving throw every turn or something? Uh, you have to use your turn to make a investigation check you have to, to use your... you you can do that if you want um, um i love that it just that. doesn't happen it, it's not automatic every turn he has to use his action that's so funny also i could be mistaken on this but i'm pretty sure it's one of those ones where it's like it's just in their head so yeah. it's also just incredibly humiliating <laughs> I love it so much. It is. It's brilliant. Um, he has not done his action to uh to try to investigate. So go ahead and roll the damage for the bees. 
Uh, That's three points of B damage. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> best kind of damage. I, I believe that you have found the best form of damage in the game. Fantastic. Um, would it, go on. I was going to say, would it be piercing damage because of their stingers? <laughs> it's psychic damage because it's in his head. Uh. <laughs> but he perceives it as the, like, as a it's real, which is so cool because that wouldn't tip someone off that it's ah, oh, it's so good, it's such a good spell. Um, to be honest, uh, I don't, I don't know what to do. I just kind of want to keep him all bee like and everything. Uh, so I could cast fireball and everybody will be safe as well because I can, because of um, my. Uh, level six, um, evocation um, thing with my wizard means that I can pick X amount of people when I've got enough to cover you all, so you won't take damage. Uh, but uh, I think um, Haragar is going to have to make a deck saving throw, um, or else he's going to burn into a crisp. Does a 15 pass? It does not. 16 was what you needed to beat. Oh, man. Go ahead, roll your damage. Thank God it does it all for me. 8d6. Let's go. 8d6. Holy. That's 26 points of damage. Burning. Ooh. I see. Taking away that last heal. Yeah. Yeah, you have undone the work of his of his cure wounds on himself. For sure. Uh yeah, uh you you fire erupts Lydiana, the fire does not touch uh you. Um and you just go, ah um the bees are burning, but somehow they're still there. Um, fire bees. Fire bees. Uh, and his shield of faith drops. He loses concentration. Uh, <laughs> finally, after all of that. Uh, so his armor class has uh, decreased from whatever it was before to whatever it is now. But two less. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Anything else for Nurgle? Uh, let's just make a note that I've been laughing maniacally this whole time um, yeah. and insinuating That's that fire insane. bees, fire killer bees, and just screaming that innately whilst la <laughs> laughing. It's the fire killer bees. Yeah. <laughs> the fire killer bees. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so good. Uh, Haragar's going to uh, legendary action, blood puppet uh, can say four. Can say four is going to move over here and uh, kill can say three. Whoa. Rude. Yep. That's uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, that is his legend, one of his first legendary action of the round. Um, Gwen, you go after Nurgle. Woo! Um, going to move up a bit let's let's go here no come on oh my gosh you know when you like my computer okay let's go like i gotta move over like 15 feet so i have like a straight line i can shoot him yeah while still being far back um and shoot him that is uh, 90 foot uh, range. Does that I matter for your bow? Cool. Cool beans. Right, it's, uh, I think it's 180 feet is the short range. Oh. Or something silly like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, go go, go for it. 150, but yeah. Uh, and I am going to shoot him. Let's do the green one. Natural 20. No. <laughs> okay. 
A uh, critical hit for Gwen. Gwen so did really it's, well. <laughs> Go for it. It's the the way you do it is just full damage on the dice and then roll. Full damage that you would do and then roll the damage dice that you would roll. Yeah. Okay, so it's a d6 and a d8. So 14 plus ooh, six bonuses. 22 plus 4 for my dex is 26. 6 plus 4 for my favorite enemy is 30. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still getting used to all of her. Like, I didn't... Yeah, it's just on damage with weapon attacks. Uh, I think it would, have been would you like to give any flavor to, to this critical hit as it shoots toward her agar? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, my ideals is freedom. Tyrants must not be allowed to oppress the people. I chose that ages ago and forgot I had chosen that. Um, but she's really feeling it today, seeing her friends be controlled. Uh, and she's not pleased with anything happening um so she's gonna sort of duck over from where she was and get line of sight on him and just not anything but letting out like a guttural grunt as she shoots him and she's gonna try and shoot him uh like, she's going to hit him in the shoulder of the hand that's holding the staff. Awesome. Um, I'm going to roll a little injury check real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, you see, you hit him in that shoulder. Um, that arm drops and goes limp. He no longer has use of that arm. Uh, and, uh, this staff clatters to the floor. He sees the staff hover over the edge of a, of a cliff. I'm going to give him a chance to break out of this, to investigate this thing, uh, and break out of this, uh, illusion that he's got because there have been a couple of incongruities. Yeah, 16. He, he got a 17. Um, he is no longer affected by bees as he sees these incongruities. He no longer has the staff in his hand, uh, but he the bees disappear. Uh, he sees the ground around him. Um, just howls in pain. Just so much pain as, like, just the muscles get, like, torn in his shoulder. Be good now. <laughs> 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 Um, so I get a second attack. Yep. Which I, I rolled, and you might have seen my face do a thing, because I rolled it, and I'm just sending to the Facebook chat what I rolled. Oh, no, please. I haven't touched it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Roll your damage. So again, that's a D8 and a D6. So base damage is 14. <clears throat> plus, I wrote six on the six again. 23, 27, when 31. 31. No, 30. 30 in total? No, 31. 31. <laughs> okay. Uh, flavor it up. <laughs> uh, crouching uh, a little bit behind Nurgle, who's now screaming bee puns. Uh, <laughs> she's, there's sort of the view of him doing that, and then it goes back, and it's just her on the ground, like... <laughs> Letting it go again. And again, these are all non-lethal. She's looking really, she's looking really focused, but really shaken up. Okay, uh, where does this next arrow fly and hit? 
Uh, the next one I want to hit in his uh, other shoulder. When your second arrow hits his second shoulder, the book falls from his hand and his other arm goes limp as the muscles are torn in that arm as well. He's looking bad now. Blood is freely flowing down his two completely limp arms. The book and the staff lie by his sides. Uh, he howls in pain. And I will move over like 15 feet. So basically I did like this up the hallway. So I'm moving closer, but I'm still hugging the wall. Got and it. so now that I, so I have a bit of cover. And that I believe is my turn. Uh, Levitar, goddess of pain, guide me through this trying time. Or he's going to Legendary Action Cure Wounds himself. Or he's going to do it at one of his higher level spell slots. Uh, okay. He's, he's... He's recovered a little bit of what you did to him. But not everything. Uh, after Gwen is going to be the Sun Soul Monks. Okay. Uh, Sun Soul Monk 2 is going to get in range of this Kensei, and Kensei 4 goes down. They were low on health. Uh, Sun Soul Monk uh, 1 is still engaged with uh, Kensei 1. Kensei 1 is like, starting to look a little bit worse for wear, but is still up, as is Kensei 2. Um, Sun Soul 3, on the other hand, is going to move... A beam of light from their head is going to radiate uh, an explosion centered on Nurgle. Let's have a look at where that's going to go. Uh, let's make it orange. Let's remember that Nurgle is a wizard. <laughs> let's remember Nurgle is a wizard. Uh, <laughs> 15, 20, 20, radius, so 35. 30, 35, 40 uh, is the uh, blast radius of that ability. Um, I am going to need for everybody in there to make a constitution saving throw. Please. The best. The best. Uh, yeah, no, seven. <sighs> 20. What's, uh, uh, Sam? <clears throat> What's the modifier? Uh, your constitution okay. modifier. Oh, that's just 14. 19. 14, 19. Um, can Bodger make a saving yes. throw as well? <laughs> and the water for oh, that's, uh, that's, that's an eight for Bodger. Eight for Bodger. So I believe <laughs> Gwen and... Uh, <laughs> I know. Gwen and uh, Ursan are the ones who past the saving throw, so you take half damage? Uh, no, you don't take any damage at all. That's the way this works. Um, Audra, Tombar, and Gwen. Oh. Uh, 22 points of radiant damage. Didn't I save? Is that good? Sorry, not Gwen. You know what I mean. The other people. Uh, yes. Roger, Roger Nurgle and Tom Barks, what I meant to say. My bad. My current hit points are 21. 22 Is that good? 22 points of radiant damage. So Bodger is, Bodger is down. Bodger is down. Tom Bar is down. I'm down. The, am I permanently dead? No, or... you are unconscious. Oh, right. Okay, cool. It's, it's saving through time. Uh, Nurgle, how you doing? Sticky. Sorry? I'm very sticky. You're very sticky. Yeah. Why'd you have to say it that way? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, could could Tomba cast shield as a reaction? Um would that do anything? Just to Tomba, what did you what down. did you get for your saving throw? Because normally no, but it might be fun. 
Julian, what did you get for your saving throw? My saving throw, 14. 14? Mm-hmm. I will... I will... Uh... No, I'm not going to bend the rules that far. I'm sorry. It's, it increases his AC, but it doesn't help with saving throws. Um, yeah. That's the way I'm, ha- I'm going to have to rule that. Okay. Oh, uh, do you get evasion or uncanny dodge yet? I, I believe the first one's attack rolls. Uncanny dodge is attack rolls, and evasion, I believe, is level seven or later on, even. Yeah, 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 it's seven. Uh, okay, uh, Bodger and Tombar go down from that blast. Um, Ursan, the next turn is yours. Oh, I'm fuming, mate. I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm so pissed off at this sunsault here. <laughs> screw, screw for Agar. I'm gonna kind of move into sight here of the sunsault and uh, go for a, uh, a ranged attack. But first, I'm gonna cast a second level hail of thorns. Very nice. So I'm gonna yeah, go for the sunsault three. So the first first attack is a uh, sixteen. 16 exactly hits. Perfect. So then we get 1d8 damage. So that's 6 damage from the arrow, and then 2d10 for the... Okay. 11, 17 damage for the first attack. 17 damage for the first attack. Sun Soul's going to use his reaction to try to catch this arrow and reduce the damage it takes. Um, uh, still takes four points of damage from this arrow, but slows it enough to, uh, but that's its reaction used. Okay. And then he has to do a, he has to do a con saving throw for this, the, not, not con, um, he has to do a saving throw for head of thorns, doesn't he? Yeah. Dexterity saving throw. So I've, I've already rolled the damage, but... Dexterity saving throw is going to be a 21, so it's going to pass. Yeah. Well, bums. Well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll fire another arrow. Does he take half damage, or is it all or nothing? Uh, oh, half. Half damage, so what's half of 11? Do you round up? Uh, you round down, so it's five. Round down, five. Cool. So he yep. takes five damage from that. Great. Still and then I'm gonna starting to look bad. I'm going to go for another arrow. Does 13 hit? 13 does not hit. Whistles past his head. He looks kind of disgruntled. Uh, you see, you've you've done a decent portion of damage to him uh, over the course of that uh, turn, and he was a little bit roughed up before. If that arrow had hit, there was every chance that you could have ended him. Um, but he I is see. still standing. Uh, Ursen, that was your turn. Uh, mm-hmm. At the end of your turn... Um, I think Rhaegar's going to burn through his spell slots and uh, uh, and he's going to cure wounds on himself again. He's he's using them up, though. He's, he's really being forced. <laughs> yeah, he recovers a little bit more. Uh, what did I just say? Uh, is, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, you, you see, just, just trying to recover, just trying to... Uh, yeah, uh, he heals himself for another uh, chunk of hit points. Um, and then it is Tombar's turn. Tombar, can you roll me a death saving throw if you'd be so kind? This is just a d20 with nothing added. Let us know what you get. Okay. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Four. Four. That's your first failed death save. Um, you have a little box for these, uh, little uh, successes and fails. You need three yeah. fails before you are dead, and three successes before you are stabilized. You're still just unconscious. You are not dead. Okay. Isabin, that is your turn next. Okay. <clears throat> 
So I'm within easy striking distance of Sun Soul Numero Uno. Oh, yes. So. You could get in there with your crossbow or your short sword, whichever you prefer. Oh, let's do a bit of sword. Yeah. yeah. Stabby. So, yeah, let's get stabby. <laughs> let's get stabby in it. Sorry. And because you have an ally within five feet, this is going to be sneak attack if you hit. Cool. So a d20? Uh, a yes. Yes, yes, indeed. Plus my... Do I add... I don't add stealth to that, do I? Um, you don't add stealth. You add... What's your dexterity modifier? Three. So you're going to add six to your attack rolls. Okay, so 19 then. 19 for sure hits. Uh, go ahead... Go ahead and roll 46 of damage plus three. <laughs> Rogues, Aww. man. I love them. Gotta love rogues. Four. Three. Plus what? Uh, plus three. 18. Um, that. Which one is that? Sun Soul One? <laughs> Dead. How do you want to finish this one? Oh, um, she's gonna, how tall are they? Uh, this guy's like an average sort of human height, like five, eight. I think, um, I think she's going to do her, her MO move, which is to slash the back of the knees, take him out there. And then as he falls down, stab him in the heart. Girl after my own heart. Literally. <laughs> 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 It's nice to take him out where it hurts. One hundred percent. The Kenseis who are like nearby, like nod their thanks. These guys are free to engage in the combat just freely as allies. Um, any, anything else for Isabin? Um, can I? Do I have another move? Uh, you can still you can still move. I think you can. Uh, you moved about. Wait, can 10. I can I do another attack or not? You could. Yeah, I, I'd say yes. I'd say you can swap over to a crossbow. For, or no, wait, you're a rogue, so you don't have two attacks. Yeah. So no, I'm oh, not okay. afraid. No. Okay, no, that's fine. <laughs> I couldn't remember. You could hide. You could hide. Potentially, you have a bonus action left. I think. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll um, maybe I'll try and now get in on the dude in the middle. So can I move behind? Uh, I'll move behind the pillar here. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Sounds good. Cool beans. Cool beans, indeed. It's one of those. I'm sorry. I'm just. I was just catching up on keeping track of Hragar's, uh spell slots. He's he's burning through them very quickly now. Uh. So, could you give me a stealth check uh, for your hide action, please, Isabin? Yep. That is um, a d20 plus my stealth. Yep, yep. I'll get, you know, by the end of this, I'll, I'll actually know <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, 16. No rush at all. 16 stealth. Brilliant. No one is going to see you. <laughs> uh, you are safely hidden behind that pillar. Marvelous. Back up to the top, Kensei's newly freed, going to take their turns. 30. Having seen what the other guy did, yeah, they are. They're going to, they're just going to go over. Well, let's see how much damage they can do. These guys. It was quite brutal the last time. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. That is a lot of damage. Uh, those Sun Souls die. Those Sun hey. Souls are gone. The Sun Souls are out of this fight. Um, They've avenged Bocha. And say one <laughs> will turn to Ursa and go, sorry to steal your kill. This just seemed really important to get done. Ursa <laughs> is fine with it. The guy's dead. Glorious. Uh, those it's enemies are it. out of the way. Um, Horegar takes a turn. Ah, ah. 
And through pain, we learn to better ourselves, better master ourselves. Through pain, we learn what it means to inflict pain on others. Tenant the second, pain. Um, I don't know what you do, but do. do. What did you do for one of the creatures at the beginning of the turn of the order and the end of the time? Do this, do this, do this, do Well, we're going to hit one more from the past, but uh, <laughs> what is can you go to the That's Tim chanting this spell. <laughs> that's, him, that's him chanting whatever it was he was doing. Um, how about that? How about that? Five, ten. Oh shit. Um, good. An aura expands from around him. All of the blood on the ground that is uh that is dripping from him like streams upward as the gravity has been uh inversed, and then the blood steams and ripples outward in an aura of pain, which will do stuff to everybody on their turn. Dude, I'm already unconscious. This isn't <laughs> it is worth that noting is. that if Tombar starts his turn in this aura, it could be very bad if he's down. Okay. Um, that is Haregar's um, turn. Uh, Lydiana, you're up. Okay, so she will cast with a bonus action, Wrathful Smite. Um, yeah. And then she will use um, booming, uh, well, an attack with booming blade again. This time, oh, f- ten to hit. <laughs> ten does not hit her agar, I'm afraid. Okay, well, she's going to. Uh, <laughs> she's very frustrated by this, so uses action surge and Beautiful. tries again. Oh. <laughs> 12 to <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's a taste of our own medicine, isn't it? Oh. Okay. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, that's it. Uh, cool. Uh, Lydiana, that's your turn. Uh, Nurgle, we come back to you. <clears throat> Nurgle's outside, though. Yeah, I'm going to uh, just. Uh, like, I reckon. Fuck it. Yeah, let's just chuck that, that next fireball at him. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, no. Next safe throw. He's really bad at these. That's going to be a 12. Go ahead and roll your damage. Ah, fire bees. 23 points <laughs> of running damage. Oh, no. That's not good for him. I. You have undone his previous cure wounds on himself. Uh, yeah, just fire. <sighs> ah. uh, unhappy, unhappy man. Then I'm going to move here. So I'm kind of like out of line of sight behind this pillar thing. Please. <laughs> yeah. bad, and if anybody can heal. Please think of me. Yeah. <laughs> Check that you didn't move too far away from me. No, you're good. Because <laughs> I, I can't reach Tom Bar, and I'm like, I have to heal someone to feel better. Yeah, I, Tom Bar, I'd love to come and stabilize you, bruv, but nah, you're all right. You're doing all right over here for me. Dude, you're um, all right. All I did was a failed spell in the night behind a pillar. This is so, like... <laughs> I barely had a chance to do anything cool. Does the co- does the cauldron take damage as well? Um, the cauldron. Uh... Mind you, cauldrons live on fire. Yeah. So like, no, of course it isn't. I cauldrons reckon the cauldron's fire. fine. I, fr- I re- yeah, I think the cauldron. I think the cauldron isn't immune to fire damage, but its damage threshold for fire damage is like a hundred. Yeah. The cauldron has no feelings. <laughs> ah, cauldron's fine. Um. Cool stuff. Uh, Nurgle has gone. 
Gwen, that is you. All the people who start their turn outside of this aura. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, moving my Gwen. Oh my gosh, Alerta. Okay, there we go. Move my Gwen up to Nurgle. I'm going to heal him. I'm going to heal him. And I'm going to heal him really good because I'm going to use a second level spell slot to heal him. Um, so, it's going to be... 48 plus 2. Ooh. Thank you. Let me oh, just sorry. roll. Dos. It'll be oh, 9, 10, 11 points of healing. Thank you. You're that's, welcome. That's going to help keep the wolf away from the door. So, cheers, bruv. You're very welcome. Um, Amazing. I think that's about what I can do. I am so sorry about this, Lydiana. Uh, I realized that you started to turn immediately after he put up this aura. So you are going to take damage from his aura. <laughs> so I got away with it. Uh, <laughs> 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 it was quiet. He was like, yeah, they've got away this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. You are going to take 10 points of necrotic damage uh, starting your turn in this aura. Um, sure. cool beams. Uh, after Gwen would have been the Sun Souls, but they are dead. Uh, Ursan, that is you. You started in this aura. You're going to take five points of necrotic damage. Uh, cool. It is your turn. Um, I am going to. How small is Tombar? He is a person size. He is a medium sized okay. creature. Yes, please, please. Person size. So I we're... apologize. That's heightest. He's average height you... for a human. Yeah, age. average height. <laughs> um, You're so insensitive. Can I? Um, it, would it take my whole turn to go in there, pick him up, and then bring him out? No, I wouldn't say it would. Uh, I'll let I'll let that be a movement and a bonus action if you. Uh, Right. Because there's a little, bit, little bit more than object interaction, but i would still let you right. have an action for the turn. Right, cool. So I'm going to go in there, pick Tombar up, drag yep. him out of the aura. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. And then I'll, I'm I'm in line of sight of Horegar. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little um do a little bow and arrowing. Lovely. Plastic bow and arrow. Does a thirteen hit? I don't. Thirteen does not doing. hit Horegar. Does a twenty-four hit? Twenty-four does hit Horegar. Absolutely. Cool. So it's just a cheeky D eight damage. Plus, yeah, oh, right, yeah, just a D eight damage. Fair enough. Two, two damage. I'm What's trying. What's your strength modifier? Plus three. You add you add three to these attacks, I think. Really. I'm pretty sure. If you're using strength well, as your primary, as your primary stat for attacking, then yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess I think I looked this up because I think you can't with a longbow. Oh, it might be weapon specific, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I I do it with my short sword, but not with the longbow. Got it. Then you're right. So you need you need to dream up a uh, a magic item. I can add my strength modifier to my longbow. <laughs> I will I will dream that up for sure. Uh, brilliant. At the end of your turn, he's going to use a legendary action. <laughs> Boys and girls, it's tired, it's old, he he gotta do it. Um he's gonna cure wounds on himself. Good stuff. Uh, after after Ursan is Tom Bar Tom Bar, could you give me another death saving throw if you'd be so kind? I'm so sorry you have been out of this fight. For a couple rounds. Oh, death saving. Yep, yep. Do I have a modifier? No, I don't have a modifier. No, for that. Seventeen. One success. Uh, excellent. You are that much closer to being stabilized. Uh, Isabin, on your turn, you start by taking eleven points of necrotic damage from this aura. Ow. Yeah. 
you can feel the you can feel that this is just targeting your nerves this is like pure essence of pain uh mm -hmm. sensory overload into your mind okay but you are hidden yes so can i so i can still move you can still move it's just that you take damage okay can i um use my crossbow yeah, one hundred percent. Because you're hidden, you'd get advantage on the attack. Awesome. So I'll use that at the big fella in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Do I need to measure it or anything? No, no. You just go for it. Okay. Uh, um, am I adding plus six to it? Is that right? You're adding plus six. Uh, you roll a d20 yeah. twice and take the highest one, then add six. Okay. Yeah. We have got the same one twice. Um, <laughs> 20. 20 is going to hit. Woo. Yes, yes. And then it's with sneak attack, so it's going to be that 4d6 plus three. What do I do with that? <laughs> uh, roll 4d6 and add three, and that's the amount of oh, damage. 4d6. I thought you said 46. I was like, huh? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 4d6 plus three. Yeah. I'm with you. 19. Oh, very, very nice. Whoop, whoop. Very nice indeed. Yeah, uh, for all of his healing, he's struggling to keep up with the amount of punishment that he's taking, and he can't do this over and over again. He's running out of slots. Um, at the end of Isabin's turn, um, you see him, <sighs> uh, blood puppet, uh, Kensei one over who hits Kensei number two uh, with an attack. And just like, just... <sighs> trying to limit the number of people who are attacking him. Um, I realized that I did one round where he healed maybe a little bit more than he should have, but that's okay. Because um, he will make up for it by not doing as much in the next round. Because uh, of the number of legendary actions that it costs for him to do that cure wounds thing. Cool beans. Uh, that's Isabin's turn. These two Kenseis are going to take damage at the start of theirs. 10 necrotic damage puts them both dead, I'm afraid. Boom. Uh, they are gone. Then Horegar takes his turn. Horegar, his arms limp, standing amidst this, like, shimmering sort of uh, heat mirage of, like, red-tinted, quivering air. Um, uh, looks at Lidiana nearby, um, has just been hit with a crossbow bolt from the side. He's got he's got arrows sticking out of him all over the place. It's starting to look like a pin cushion. Um, sees the group of you over there. <sighs> we've been through the tyranny of life, and we've come through pain. There is only one thing left for you. It's just like. He's managed to heal one of his arms just enough to raise it. <sighs> death. Uh, Tenant the third, death. Um, over here, this is a 20 foot radius sphere. So let's paint it in. Boom. Uh, everybody in there, can I get a constitution saving throw with the exception of Tombar and Bodger? So anyone from Gwen, Nurgle, and Ursan. Uh, seven. Seven does not do it. Natural one. Natural one is bad. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here we go. Oh my god, 19. Nurgle. No, 19's gonna pass. Oh. Okay. I'm going to have to take half of this damage as well, and I, I bet. Oh, no. This is worthy of its name. Uh, 
Nurgle takes 16 points of damage. Oh, I'm just... <laughs> just... <sighs> Gwen uh, and Ursam are pulled toward the center of this gravity well. <laughs> That, Ooh, that, that uh, gravity sinkhole appears in the center here and draws you in. Uh, Nurgle somehow manages to uh, keep from being pulled in towards the center. Ursan and Gwen are pulled in and take 32 points of force damage each. Uh, I'm going to use my stone's endurance to reduce that by 1d12, if that's okay. <laughs> I, I expect that... It will help, yes. I want to clarify for anyone watching that it's not sexy that Haragar's using this. It's just a sexy spell. But it's absolutely disgusting that he would put his hands on this spell. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was the damage again? 32 force damage. Okay, so that's 25. 25. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I'm, st I'm still kicking. You're still you kicking. Know? Gwen is still kicking. The spell did not. <laughs> Gwen Urkel's still kicking. Um, have we been rolling death saves for Bodger? Uh, I haven't. Do you want me to roll three for him now? I would like I... you to roll two for him. I believe that's the amount of time that's passed since he's gone down. Do I need... that, was a t that was a two. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get to what happens now in a second. And a one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh no. As, as this gravity you... sinkhole as this gravity sinkhole pulls at uh at the bodies of uh, the unconscious bodies of uh Bodger and Tombar, uh Tombar you get one more fail automatically from taking damage. Bodger dies. No. Oh. Bodger I'm is so dead. Fine. It's kind of it's kind of weird that my first D and D death, the witness of death, is a, a badger. <laughs> first party it's death. Like, first party death is the badger. Is a woodland creature. <laughs> um, the power of Mercall fades. You all sort of collapse in a pile, and Ursan, you can tell immediately that your giant badger is not breathing. Oh, man. Seconds may. He's, he's, his eyes are like just kind of focused with rage right now. He, he's, no, he's not taking anything in around him. Just wait, wait, waiting. Waiting for his, uh, his next chance. Um, rest in peace, Bodger. Uh, 100%. That was Horegar's turn. Lydiana, you're up. Um, Lydiana touches herself with protection from evil and good. <laughs> oh, it was the pause. It was the pause. <laughs> You <laughs> really undercut that dramatic moment with that as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Julian. Uh, Nurgle, you can hear like in the background here, just Nurgle chuckling. I'm uh, I'm doing everything not to live up to uh my expectations right now. <laughs> but I, I did do a slight eyebrow raise. I and... saw it. I took that as permission for me to also <laughs> not completely hide my reaction. I was like, okay, we're acknowledging <laughs> this. Good. It's just like, mm. <laughs> I touch myself. I want to adore Lydia, you feel your boots, girl. You do what has to be done in this situation. No judgment on my side. You touch yourself. Um, Lydiana, much um, luck here she... with the dice rolls. I'm so sorry. You take four points of necrotic damage from this aura. Oh, shit. Four, four points, did you say? Four points of necrotic damage. Okay. Um, and she 
I have to find myself a new companion. Yeah. Um, so she does, um, she gets advantage on her next country. Come on. Brilliant. Okay, that's 23 to hit, finally. <laughs> 23, 100% hits. Okay, and then she uses both her blasts of Eldritch Blast. So that would be 10 for the first. I believe 13. you need to roll the hit individually for each one. I do? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, sorry, that was 10 to hit for the first one. Uh, sorry, 10 damage then on the yep. first. And then I'll roll to hit with advantage on the second. That's 24. 100%. And then the roll will be... Ten again. Okay, we're getting there. He's he's <laughs> not he's, he's he, it's slow, but he's starting to look a little worse for wear now. Hundred uh, percent. Lydiana, that was you, Nurgle. Cool. So yeah, I'm just gonna chuck in a fireball, and fingers crossed, this is the last time we're doing this. Yeah, it's like a real war of attrition. Uh, come on, deck save and throw. Yes, sir. My apologies, sir. Natural one. Wow! <laughs> Whoa! Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Got so many windows frozen? open. Right. Here it comes. Here it comes. Fireball. Twenty six points of fire damage. Oh, still up. Oh, get out of town. Still, he's healed so much over the course of this fight. He's he, he can't keep doing it, but he's he is healed so much. Yeah, you see him just still up, but uh, just burning inside of his armor. His robes are starting to like come off. Um, you can see like skin is burning underneath. God, I want to run out of this fucking room. <laughs> Uh, that is Nurgle. Uh, Gwen, you're up. Okay. Um, I am torn. Uh, Umbar is on two Tom death Tom saves. Tom. It's on two failed yeah, death I saves. Yeah, I know. I gotta... Um, I'm gonna get up in there somewhere and heal him. Uh, at second level. Uh, so... Nine points of healing to Tombar. You are uh, back up, Tombar, with nine hit points. Tombar's like, oh, what did I miss? <laughs> Literally in front of you is a dead giant badger. Oh, like... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, yeah. Tom was like, oh, dinner. <laughs> That's me. Um, yeah. Tom was kind of like, not fast, but he's like, oh, that's sad, but more important things. Sorry. Cry later. Uh, gosh. Back up to over here. If it gets her, that's about as far as she can go, having gone up to Tombar. Um, if it gets any kind of cover, but just distance from people. And I lost uh, last when I took the damage. I lost concentration on Hunter's Mark. Just so you're aware. That's a me. Uh, happy days. Uh, Buddha, boom, boom, or Sam. And I take a dash to get within striking distance of Horegar. My moves, my move speed is 30. Um, uh, then, then yes, you can. You can. I checked that. it. It's, 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 it's 50 feet. Yeah, so, 100%. So I'm, I, I'm going to jump up behind him and I'm going to swing at him with my bloody short sword. Do it. 
Does a 24 hit? 22. Yes, it does. Either one. And D6. So that's nine damage on the first attack. That's max damage. <laughs> and I'm, oh. I'm going in for a second one with the, with the other short sword because I've got two. So like, yeah, 100%. Oh, that's a two. So not going to hit. But Does not hit. Uh, yeah, you slash across uh, Rhaegar's back. Uh, he falls to his knees, uh, arms limp, bleeding out. Uh, uh, you entered his... Uh, you entered his aura, so you are going to take seven points of necrotic damage. Oh. This is, I'm, I'm going to take Barbarian. <laughs> You're going to take Barbarian. I'm going to take a level because I think it would be really cool with a Barbarian. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, Tom, Tom, God damn. Tom Bar, that is your turn. Okay, so I can attack now, right? You can, absolutely. Ooh. What kind of state is Horegar in? Very How badly in? injured. <laughs> Very badly injured indeed. I'm going to go right up to this mofo and give him a piece of my mind and do what? Ooh. I've used my bonus action on my turn to try and like get him to standing so he doesn't have to use that on his turn. Sure. What is like the most badass sword attack? I'm so sorry to do this to you, Julian. Oh, I can't. You what? enter his aura and take 10 points of necrotic damage and go oh, back on I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I will. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll uh, let I'll let you stay on the outside. Because it's clearly like an evil. It's clearly an evil, and you just saw Ursan do it. So I won't make that. I won't make it so that you have to do that. Um, right. So I don't. But but know that if you enter this aura, you're gonna go back down. Okay. Cool. Sorry. You would have. Okay. Okay. Um, oh. I'm gonna. Josh, you are too kind as a DM. There's been times where I've been playing before and learning how to play, and I've had such asshole DMs where you don't know. And like, no, I'm afraid that you've taken 26 points of fucking damage. Die, 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 die. And you're like, no. Okay, oh, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna chromatic fine. orb. Chromatic orb, excuse me. Woo! Chromatic orb. Um 100% go for it. I believe it's an attack roll to hit with a chromatic orb. Mm -hmm. So, uh, roll. What is your intelligence modifier, my friend? I think you should have a plus two. I should have a plus two. Okay. So your intelligence score should be a 14. 14? Yeah. I could be wrong about that, but that's that seems reasonable to me. So you're going to get plus five to this attack roll to hit him. Okay. Here it goes. 16. 16 to hit does not hit him. Plus five, though. Oh, 21. 21 does yeah, hit. Yeah. Absolutely. 21, yeah. Um, go ahead and roll 3d8 damage. 3d8 damage. Woohoohoo! 17! Tombar, how would you like to finish Hragar? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> what, what, <laughs> kind of, what kind of element can I use to. Uh... You can choose. Uh, you can choose one of acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, or thunder. Acid. Acid. That's what. Wait. What kind of acid are we talking? Roasted. <laughs> All right. I was like, not LSD. Burning acid. <laughs> Can you imagine like shit trip balls? Oh. Okay. Acid. Acid. It is. I'm like, oh, how do I do this? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna like. <laughs> Go. And then, like, from my mouth, I just 
spit all of this acid. <laughs> like narrowly like, avoiding Lidiana passing over her shoulder. Because like, Tom Bonomini has like a cigar hanging out. So he's just like and like just casually just goes and it's like a chromatic orb of acid it just goes <laughs> flying towards him. Uh, chromatic orb flies over Lidiana, Lidiana's shoulder, spat from your mouth, um, hits the kneeling Hregar, and you just see this acid eat into this helmet uh, and mask that he has been wearing, eat into his flesh and clothes, and like down to the bone in seconds. Um, you see the metal melt off of his face, uh, and for a brief second, you see like the human uh, face, and you see that he has been like crying blood as part of like some of his rituals that he's been casting. And then you just see like that half of his face melt away and the eye go, and you just see this like half of his face is just skeletal. Nice. Great. Face. Hragar is gone. Um, the aura dissipates. This combat is over. Or is it? Oh. A magic that was uh, around him kicks in. He is half skeletal and yet he moves. Uh, his other hand raises just enough to touch the cauldron as this spark of life is kept in him for an extra six seconds because he had death ward on him. He, uh, he touches the cauldron uh, and you hear out of his rasping out of what's left of his mouth, uh, uh, the deal is fulfilled. Hope you had time. Fourteen. The cauldron and Lydiana, space warps around them and they are gone. And that is where we are gonna end tonight's session. Thank you all very much for watching. Tune in next time as the end comes. <laughs> we are in the final <laughs> act of the reserve list. Peace for now. Goodbye. Bye.